This isn't a basics of landing video. This is more about two very specific mistakes I see a lot of pilots make. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, we are gonna be talking about two extremely common landing mistakes and specific solutions for how to deal with them. This isn't a basics of landing video. Like if you want just a general how to get better at landing, check the description, we've got a bunch of those. This is more about two very specific mistakes I see a lot of pilots make. The first one is during the transition from the round out to the flare, some pilots pull too hard and fast and they balloon, other pilots flare a little bit too late and they land flat or even worse, they sometimes hit the nose wheel. So the question is, how do you know how far and how fast to pull? Okay, and I'm assuming the basics are all in place, airspeed's on point and all of that sort of stuff. The reality is it just takes butt time in the seat. I had an instructor tell me once that it's 100 hours in an airplane before you can figure out exactly how to land it. So you have to figure out what is right and what is wrong. So have your CFI bring you into the landing and have your CFI intentionally balloon the airplane. Now when they do this, there's three possible outcomes. You're either gonna go around, you're gonna add power, bring it back to the runway, or you're gonna bring it back to the runway without needing to add power. There's a whole video we did on those three possibilities, but when your instructor intentionally balloons the aircraft and hands it over to you, you have an opportunity to practice, to decide what is it I'm supposed to do here. Am I supposed to go around? Am I supposed to add power and bring it back down? Or am I supposed to just settle it back to the runway using the airspeed and power configuration that I have? Okay, and another Another really important thing is using your Lindbergh reference. You guys all know the Lindbergh reference at this point, so make sure you're practicing high-speed taxis down the length of the runway so that you can use that reference. Your job is going to be to look at the Lindbergh reference. Okay. And you've got the pedals. Okay. Um, you don't need to touch the yoke here. Okay. I'll do that. Um, but just keep us basically on the runway and practice what that looks like, okay? Um, this is a, what we'd call a soft field takeoff. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, it means we're going to ride a wheelie down the runway. Okay. So, all right. Um, so I have rudder? You, yep, and look at your Lindbergh reference. Good. There you go. A little right rudder. A little more right rudder. There you go. Now we're going straight. Good, like that. And then just keep us on the runway, trusting that Lindbergh reference. Good. If you see center line out there, you went too far to the right. Good. All right. This is what a flare should look like. The end of the the end of the takeoff, I mean the end of the landing rather, is this pitch attitude. So try to burn the pitch attitude into your mind. Sometimes after a balloon, when you're settling back to the runway, you want your nose to be high. You, you don't at that low energy state want to push forward. Right, that is gonna release everything and cause you to fall toward the ground and hit the nose wheel in all likelihood, right? You want to settle the aircraft back to the ground in the attitude you need to be in for the flare. Again, if that requires power, it requires power. If it doesn't, great. And if it's not salvageable, go around. But after you do those high-speed taxis to confirm you've got the Lindbergh reference, if your instructor sort of practices this with you, It'll be valuable butt time in the seat, and hopefully you can avoid being that person that pulls too hard too fast or pulls too little too late, and you can figure out that perfect finesse that we're all going for in the flare. The other mistake that I see pilots make is directional control. To be totally honest, if you're perfectly lined up with the runway, you can drop it in from higher than you'd probably want to, and it'll feel okay with that spring steel. What feels weird in landing is the side loading, when you hit sideways, and often what happens as we slow down is the slightest little breath of a crosswind gets us, pivots the airplane into the wind while you're flaring and you don't know where to look, and boom, you land sideways, and it feels bad. Uh, by the way, for soft field landing demonstrations, usually it's side loading that gets people. Not in reality, because you can slide on grass, but in the demonstration, work on your alignment. So again, the first thing, high-speed taxis using the Lindbergh reference. But then the actual skill you want to practice with your instructor, once you know, you know, using that, that nose-high reference, once you know what it's supposed to look like when you're lined up, and, and don't be afraid to calibrate it, lean toward the center of the airplane, figure it out. 
Once you know that, you and your instructor can practice drift exercises. All right, so we're gonna look at a low approach drift exercise that you can use to start to get a good feel for, for side slips. Um, and the exercise is a low approach where you just kind of zigzag along the runway, um, really working to keep your nose straight down the runway and be subtle with the rudders. The only challenging part about this, this drill that I'm gonna show you here is, um, it's sometimes not easy to tell. Like you can't get low enough to really see the effect I'm talking about and your nose can be a little crooked and it's difficult to see. So I would think of this as very, um, you know, like when you're just learning, just starting, start here. And as you get more comfortable though, you're gonna need to take it through to an actual landing. All right, so here, this is gonna be a low approach. Remember, we're doing drift exercises. I'm gonna keep the flaps at 20 uh, because I don't want too much form drag down here this low to the ground, especially in an airplane with a lower power engine like this one. But this is the basic idea. We're gonna do the same thing we did last time. Intentionally line up with the right side of the runway and try to side slip all the way down the runway. So first slip all the way over to the left, then back to the right, then to the left. Just trying to keep our nose straight down the runway. Um, if, you know, your instructor should be managing the power here. If you're doing this on your own, make sure you're using enough power to fight the drag and fly level. But even here at 100 feet, it's a little bit tricky to see it. Anyway, this is what it looks like. We're gonna go left first. So I bank, remember, point the ailerons the way you want the airplane to go and just prevent the nose from following. Good, so you're just trying to work on keeping the nose straight down the runway and then back to the right, again, preventing the nose from following. And the airplane just goes sideways. That's why they call it a side slip, right? And this is how you develop precision lateral control. The same inputs as a forward slip, but not the same effect. I promise when you do this, you're gonna go in one direction and you're gonna think, oh, that's great, I got it. And then you're gonna go in the other direction and it's all out of whack, right? Some people are good left, bad right, or vice versa. That's all part of the process. Knowing what it looks like when it's all out of whack is helping you figure out what it looks like when it's in whack, if you know what I mean, right? So you're just trying to memorize that picture um, by playing with it in the low approach and knowing what you're going for from those high-speed taxis, you can really, really practice with this drift exercise. Those are super common mistakes I see in landing. Those are specific drills you can do with your CFI uh, to, to get better at that and really, really nail your landings the next time you go flying with passengers. All right, aviators, this is all in the Ground School app, of course, so please get your free three-day trial of the Ground School app if you haven't yet. Also, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, hit the little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. Leave us a comment if there's a specific video you'd like to see. Remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. Someday your airport might look like this, and uh, you might have some, some <laughs> legal phone calls to make. Remember that ForeFlight is the essential app for aviation online at ForeFlight.com. I'm Jason Miller. You guys are the best fans on the internet, and until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.